Hey everyone, and welcome to this video lecture, Path Nodes and Ammo. In this tutorial, I'm going to explain to you how path nodes work, how to place bots in your UDK game, and then how to place ammo drops, health vials, health pickups, uh, jump pads, and weapon pickups. That way you can cook your game and play in an instant action multiplayer game against bots. So first things first, the most important part of this entire tutorial is going to be learning how to use a path node. Next on the list of importance are player starts. Now we start the basic map here that UDK gives us with one player start and that's going to look something like uh, this right over here. It's this little controller looking symbol and it has a tiny little arrow on it. Now down here it says persistent level player start zero, meaning this is the first player start, and we can have as many as we'd like. The little arrow, if you it's hard to see, but the little arrow here indicates which direction the player will face when spawned at this location. So what we want to do is in our little map here, we're going to create four player starts. This means it can be up to four players, including bots. So let's go ahead and take our first player location and we're going to select it in the top down location. And we're just going to move it to one of the corners. So let's move it over here. Now simply by holding alt and dragging we can create the second player start. And the third. And the fourth. So now if we were to play this level and cook it, we could have up to four players and we could have up bots spawning at these locations. However, the bots don't have any path nodes right now, meaning they don't have any instructions on how your level is built. And so they will simply just stand there or do the best they can to try and move around in a small area, but definitely not optimal. So the second part of this is going to be placing path nodes. Now if you ever opened up any other UDK level, you may or may not have seen hundreds of these little tiny apples all over the map. An apple is UDK's symbol for path node for whatever reason. And that's basically a point in a giant web of directions that a bot is able to go. Now player starts, ammo and weapon pickups, health pickups, and path node locations as well as vehicle and jump pad locations, these all are connected so that the AI knows where to go and in which areas to pick up things when they need to. So the very rudimentary thing to do here is to start adding just path nodes so the player or so the AI knows where to go. And we have these little houses here with these uh, tunnels. So the bot's not going to really know how to go in them yet. So let's go ahead and tell him that he can go in them. So we're going to right click to get our context menu and choose add actor path node. Again we can see here it's this little apple. So we're going to go ahead and move this in our top down frame here. In the middle of our intersection and then duplicate it so that the bot knows that it can go outside in any one of these directions. So I'm going to do the same thing for the other houses here. And lastly, I'm going to go ahead and place a couple more just in the different areas uh, so the bots know they can run around in areas outside this. So let's go ahead and place one in the middle of the map. And 
and we'll place one up here. Okay, now that we have placed a bunch of path nodes, the important thing is we have to build them. Basically build the connections between our player starts and our path nodes. And just like we do with geometry or lighting, it's going to be up here in the build paths. We come up with one error here saying the map needs the lighting rebuilt, so we'll go ahead and just hit close. And we should have enough locations now for bots. So the next thing we want to do is add a couple things to pick up in the level. So for that we're going to use our content browser. So go ahead and bring up your content browser, which is this button up here. And we're going to go to our actor classes tab. Now basically actor classes has a whole bunch of useful things that we haven't really delved into. But for this part we're going to go into the pickup section right here. And this has a couple different categories, including ammo, armor, health items, and weapon. So let's go ahead and place a health pickup right in the middle of the map. They have three different options. We're going to choose a health pack. So go ahead and select that, and then right click, and add UT Pickup Factory Health Pack here. Hitting home will zoom in, and we want it kind of on the floor. So let's say we had placed it up here. Now we could use one of our side views to place it directly flush, or we could just hit the end key, which should sync it to the bottom of the next BSP or object. So let's go ahead and place this, make sure it's somewhere in the middle of our map. That looks good. So if we play from here, we can see we have a health pack. However, it's not really picking anything up yet. The reason we couldn't pick that particular one up is because we're already at full health. However, if we add health file by going to right by going to our content browser, choosing health file, and placing that in our game, and let's hit end again. We should see a little health file. And now we can click run over it and it says health 105%, meaning we picked it up. So next let's add a couple weapons. So let's go over on this side. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to Content Browser. And we're going to go to Weapon. Now here are two options. We have UT Weapon Locker Content and UT Weapon Pickup Factory. And basically the difference is the locker content will allow you to place multiple items within the same pickup location and the pickup factory will only create one. So let's go ahead and choose a pickup factory and we're going to add it. Now right now it's not going to give us anything because we need to set what weapon it spawns. Let's go ahead and hit F4 to bring up our menu again and we're going to click the top one here and choose its pickup class. These are our available options, so let's choose a shock rifle. And we can see now that a shock rifle has been spawned and can be picked up. So now we have weapons and health. Let's go ahead and add some ammo. Go back to our content browser under the ammo. We have specific ones here, so we've added a shock rifle. Let's add some shock rifle ammo. And let's add it over here. We can see our shock rifle ammo. And have picked it up. Lastly, we can add both vehicles and jump pads. So let's go to our content browser and we're going to add a vehicle real quick. So vehicles are, have their own category here and let's just pick one of these. 
and drop it over here. We're going to rebuild our paths because this is just like a path and we want to rebuild this and then test it. We should be able to hop in and use it like you would in a normal game. Lastly, let's add one of the more complicated pieces here, a jump pad. Now, as you can see, we can also add other things like armor pieces, items, that kind of stuff. It, it's the same as how we've been placing these things, so I'm going to show you just the jump pad because it's a little different. So jump pad is found under navigation. So we're going to go ahead and drop this down. We have UT jump pad. So we're going to place it over by this house right here. Now if we're playing, we can run over the jump pad. But it doesn't do anything. Same as the UT weapon pickup factory, we have to set something. Now in the case of the jump pad, it requires a path node to jump to. So we're going to create another path node on top of our building up here. So to assign this jump pad a jump target, we want to select this path node here and find the name for it. This is called path node underscore 20. Let's go back to our jump pad, type in path node underscore 20 and hit enter and it has when it fills the rest of this in that means it's found its location if we can go ahead and close this I'm going to save real quick and let's play so as you can see it has sent us to this path node and you can change some of the other features inside if you hit F4 on that on that path node there. You can change the jump. I think it's velocity and air time and so on and so forth. Now that we've placed several things, let's go ahead and cook our level once more and then test it to show how we can add bots to it. So let's go ahead and save it. And we're going to go back to our UDK game and the Unreal front end. And let's go ahead and cook our package. Okay, it has succeeded. So let's load up our UDK game. instant action. Settings, we want to set our number of opponents to the number of player starts minus you. So we have a four player starts, so let's set it to three bots. So we have some bolts flying at us here. And we can see that the bots are going ahead and fighting each other. And we can see he has respawned right there. Meaning we have successfully added path nodes. So that's the end of this lecture. In the next one, we're, I'm going to show you how to load up Kismet and utilize Kismet to create a small scripted event and hopefully 
act as a springboard for you to create your own things uh, for the next assignment, which is going to be creating your own deathmatch map in UDK.